from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. Live here in Seattle for KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 2018. It's theCUBE's coverage. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. We've been there from the beginning watching this community grow into a powerhouse, almost a Moore's Law-like growth, doubling every, actually six months. Go yeah, think about pretty it. pretty wild. Chris Anasik, CTO and CEO of the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Great to see you again. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Super stoked to be here. Thank you for being with us since the beginning. <laughs> so it's been fun to watch you guys. The CNCF has done an exceptional job. I thought a fabulous job of how you guys have, have built out a great community. Open source community as the main persona target, but brought in the vendors on terms that really worked for open source. Linux Foundation, great shepherding this thing through. Now you have basically it looks like a conference. Yeah. End user conference, vendors are here, still open source is pure. Mm -hmm. um, the growth has been phenomenal. Just take us take a minute to give us the update on just some of the stats. Yeah, Massive sure. growth. I, I mean, you know, uh, we're 8,000 people here today, which is absolutely wild. Uh, what's actually crazy is when we planned this event, it was about two years ago when we uh, had to start booking a venue, figuring out how many people may uh, be here, and two years ago we thought 5,000 would have been a fantastic number. Well, we got to 8,000, we have about 1,500 to 2,000 people on the wait list that could not get in, so uh, obviously we did not plan properly, but sometimes it's hard to predict kind of the uptake of technology these days. Things just move quickly. I think we've kind of benefited from the the, the turnaround that's happening in industry right now where companies are finally looking to modernize their infrastructure, whether it's like moving the cloud or just like yeah. modernizing things, and, and that's happening everywhere from like traditional enterprises, uh, you know, to internet scale companies, everyone's kind of looking to modernize things and we're kind of at the forefront uh, yeah. of that. I mean, the challenge of events is it's almost provisioning over provision, yeah. you don't show yeah. up. You want elastic, dynamic, I want agile. I want a cloud native event. Programmable <laughs> space that can just <laughs> go, you know, yeah. auto scale when you need it. Exactly. Um, and all kidding aside, congratulations on the success. But Thank one you. thing we've been covering on SiliconANGLE and theCUBE, yep. and you guys have been actually executing yep. on, uh, is the growth in China and open source. Yeah. The, and and it's, it's been, it's around for a while, but, yeah. but the, just the scale, yep. just pure numbers. Talk about the success in China and the impact to the open source community and business. Yeah, so we put on our first event in Shanghai, uh, KubeCon uh, China, it was fantastic. We sold out at 2,500 people. Uh, always a little bit difficult to do your first event in China. I have many stories to, to, to share on, on that one, but the amount of uh, scale in terms of uh, software deployment there is just fascinating. You kind of have these companies like uh, uh, Ofo is like a bike sharing uh, system, right? You know, in China, they have hundreds of millions of these bicycles that they have to kind of manage, you know, uh, in an infrastructure way, and the software that you use to actually do that has to be built very well. And so the trend that we're actually seeing in CNCF now is uh, about 10%, we have three projects that were born in China, dealing with China scale uh, problems. So one of those projects is TIKV, which is kind of a, uh, just a very uh, well, fine-tuned, built, distributed key value store that is used by a lot of the Chinese cloud providers and folks like Ofo and, and LME out there that are just like dealing with hundreds of millions of users. You know, it, it's, it, it's fascinating. I think the trend you're going to see in the future is there's going to be more technology that is kind of born dealing with China scale issues uh, and having those lessons kind of you know, being shared with kind of the rest of the world and collaborate. One of the goals in CNCF yeah. for us is to help bridge these communities. In China, uh, about 25% of our attendance was international, which was higher than we yeah. expected, but we had like dual like live, uh, live site simultaneous translation for everyone to kind of try to bridge these it's a, it's a big story, the consumption and the contribution side yeah. is just phenomenal, yeah, so. China is our number two contributor to all CNCF projects. It's, it's very impressive, in, in my opinion. So, Chris, there was a lot in the keynote, uh, you know, <laughs> so I, I want to give us a little insight. It's different for a foundation and open source communities than it is for a company when you talk about, you know, the, the core product being Kubernetes and then all these other projects, you got the incubating projects, the yeah. ones that have been elevated, uh, new yeah. etcd comes into it. H how do you do the, the juggling act of Yeah, this? you know, I mean, honestly, like the whole goal of the foundation is basically to cultivate and sustain and kind of grow projects that come in. Some are going to work and be very successful, some may never leave uh, you know, the sandbox, which is our kind of early stage. And so today, uh, you know, I was very excited to finally have uh, etcd come as an official incubating project. This is our 31st 
uh, project, which is a little bit, uh, a little bit wild <laughs> since, since we started. It was just Kubernetes. Um, we had other projects uh, that moved from, say, sandbox incubating. So in China, one of our big announcements was Harbor, which is a uh, container registry, or actually technically we call it a cloud native registry because it does support things like Helm charts. It doesn't only host container-based artifacts. Uh, moved up to the incubating level, and you know, that is being embedded. It's in all of Cloud Foundry's and Pivotal's products. Uh, it's used by some cloud providers in China as their uh, kind of registry as a service, like they're equivalent to like ECR or, 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 or you know, GCR, essentially, and you know, we've just seen uh, it, it incredible growth across all of our um, uh, projects. I mean, we have three graduated projects. Envoy recently, which um, saw you, you, you saw Matt, you know, Constance, and, and Jose on stage a little bit uh, talk about, which to me, you know, what I really like about Envoy and Prometheus, these were two projects that were not born from a vendor. You know, you know, Envoy came from Lyft because they were just like, you know what, uh, we're not happy with our current kind of reverse proxy, service proxy situation, let's build our own open source and kind of share our lessons. Prometheus, born from yeah. SoundCloud. So like, I think CNCF yeah. has a good mix of, you know, hey, we have some initial vendor driven projects, you know, like Kubernetes yeah. came from Google, but now it's used by a ton of people, but then you have other projects that were born from the end user community. And I think having that healthy mix is, is good for well, everyone. Well, I think the DNA of that early on in the culture has been a success formula for you guys. Not being vendor led, yep. being end user led, but vendors can come in and participate. Yeah, absolutely. So talk about the end user uh, perspective because we're very interested, a lot of people are interested yep. in end user, what are they doing with it? Yep. Um, it used to be a joke, hey, you know, I stood up, I stood up a bunch of Hadoop, but what yeah. are you using it for? Yeah, yeah. What are people using Kubernetes for? You got Apple, Uber, Capital One, yeah. Comcast, yeah. <laughs> GoDaddy, Airbnb. <laughs> They're all investing in Kubernetes as their main stack. And, and CNCF projects, not and only Kubernetes. Yeah. CNCF, yeah. But what does that mean when they say yeah. Kubernetes as a stack? It's, it's kind of been encapsulated to include other things. So people are looking at this as an, a real alternative. Can you explain so what that I, is about? So I will, so, I think people have to realize that CNCF is necessarily more than just Kubernetes. Cloud Native is more than just Kubernetes. Yeah. So what we'll see is, uh, take a company like Lyft. Uh, Lyft did not start using Kubernetes. They're kind of on that migration path now, but Lyft started to use Envoy, yeah. Prometheus, gRPC, other technologies that kind of lead them to that Cloud Native journey that eventually like, you know what, maybe we don't need our homegrown orchestrator, we'll go use, um, you know, yeah. use that. Uh, and use, like, you know, uh, Everyone kind of has a. Everyone falls in differently in kind of in kind of a community. Some people start with Kubernetes yeah. and eventually, you know, subsume the other. This kind is, of what, this is what the cloud's about. It, it, All right, so let me, let me rephrase yeah. the question. So when people say, because uh, this is real trend, we've been reporting on this. Mm -hmm. The CNCF stack. People have language, it's semantics yeah. on how they couch, but yeah. oh, I'm the Kubernetes stack. I don't stack. like stack because it means like there's one prescribed solution. Where I think it's more like an a la carte. Yeah. So model. talk about well, if I quote <laughs> in quote the CNCF yeah. stack, if yeah. there was like a, yeah. a word for yeah. it. Yeah as an alternative yeah, yeah. to, as a solution base, yeah. with Kubernetes at the yeah, core of yeah, it, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. What is, what is that usage being looked like? How is that developing? How are end users so, looking at the CNCF holistically with so, Kubernetes at the core? So, I mean, we have, uh, we have one of the largest end user communities out there in, you know, of, the, of any open source foundation. We have about 80, 80 members, and you know, when we talk to them directly, you know, you know, why are they adopting CNCF projects and technology? Most of the time is, uh, they want to deploy software faster, right? They want to use modern CI, CD tools and just development patterns. And so it's all about just like faster time to market and making the developer's lives easier. So they're actually able to deliver business customer value. Classic and, DevOps. And, and, and that's it, yeah, it's, it's basically similar to the whole DevOps mantra, yeah. right? If I could ship software faster and it's easier for my developers to get stuff done, uh, I'm delivering value to whatever the end, you know, my end user customer is at the end of the day. And like, we have, if you go to the CNCF end user website, we have case studies from uh, like Nordstrom, uh, Capital One, uh, I think Lyft is there. There's just a bunch of people that just, you know, we moved to these technologies because it improved the way we could monitor software, how fast we could ship. It's all about like faster time, uh, time to market and modernizing the infrastructure. Yeah. Chris, give us a little bit of view coming, looking forward. We're on 1.13 for Kubernetes, <laughs> uh, if I read it right. You know, the contribution slowed down a little bit because we're actually reaching a level of maturity. Uh, so, yeah. you know. Kubernetes is boring and mature, what, what, potentially. What do you yeah, see yeah. as we, as we so, come other than continued growth? So, so I think the uh, wider ecosystem is going to uh, like continue to grow. So if you actually look at Kubernetes directly, um, it has been very focused on moving things out of the core as much as possible and trying to force people to extend things. So I don't know if you saw, Tim Hawken had this great talk in terms of how 
all the Kubernetes components are either being ripped out or turned into custom resource definition or CRDs, basically trying to make Kubernetes as extensible as possible. Instead of trying to ram things into Kubernetes, hey, use the you know, built-in extensibility layer. So, you know, the analogy, so decompose it a little bit. De decompose, and the analogy here would be like kernel space versus user space if you're going to Linux. Like, all the exciting things tend to happen you know, in user space these days, but yeah, the kernel is still important. It's, you know, actively contributed to by a ton of people, very critical of everything, but a lot of the action happens in user space. And I think you'll see the same thing with Kubernetes where it'll kind of become like Linux where you know, the kernel of Kubernetes, very stable, mature, you know, focus on basically not breaking and try to keep it as simple as possible and built good extensibility mechanisms so folks could plug in whatever their systems. Like we've saw this with um, storage in Kubernetes. A lot of the initial storage drivers, flex volume stuff was baked into Kubernetes uh, with a new effort called the container storage interface, they all pulled that out and made basically built an extensibility mechanism so any, any company and, or any project could bring in their storage solution. One of the key trends that we're seeing obviously in cloud is automation. You see serverless around the corner. You see yeah. all these things going on around the cool things you guys are building. As automation continues to move down the track, where is that going to impact and create value for customer end users? as they roll with the CNCF. So Kubernetes at some point could be, why even be managing clusters? Well that should be so, automated at yeah. some point. I, I mean, hey, you could do it both ways. I mean, a lot of people love the managed service approach. If I could pay a, a large hyperscale cloud provider to manage everything, the more the merrier. Some want the freedom to yeah. roll their own. Some may want to pay uh, you know, a vendor you know, I don't know, Red Hat, OpenShift looks great. Let's, let's, let's pay them yeah. to help manage that. Or I just roll it on, and we've seen it all. We've, yeah. um, you know, it really depends on the organization. We've seen some very high-end uh, banks or financial institutions that have like very good technical chops. They're okay rolling on their own. Some may yeah. not be as interested in that and just pay pay a vendor to manage it. So, you know, for it's us, just choice issue. It's, yeah, for us, it's all goodness. Whatever whatever you prefer. I think longer term, I, we'll see more people just through the convenience of managed services go that route, but. Uh, for CNCF, Kubernetes, there's multiple ways to do it. You go vanilla, you could go you know, managed service, you could go uh, through vendor like Ra uh, yeah. Rancher or OpenShift. The cool thing about yeah. all these things is they all are conformant to the Kubernetes certified program, so it means yeah. you know, there's no breakage or forking, everyone's yeah. compliant. All right, so for the people that's, that are watching that that's... couldn't make it here or on the waiting list <laughs> or doing LobbyCon. I'm sorry, I'm know. sorry for the waiting list, yeah. <laughs> there are, well, it's actually a good venue to do LobbyCon, it's places to meet here, so I, yeah. I know a lot of people actually are in town kind of lobbyconning it, but for the people that aren't here, what's the most important story that's being told uh, and or not being talked about? What is, what is happening here? What should people know about this year? What is you, in your mind's eye and in, in your understanding of the program and how it's developing yeah. early on, you know, what's I, the I, most important I, thing? I think in general, like, you know, CNCF, Cloud Native, Kubernetes all have matured a lot in the like, last three years, uh, especially the last, I think, 12 to 18 months where we've seen kind of the, you know, earlier it was all about kind of technical savvy folks scratching their itch, you know, now, you know, the end users that I'm talking to, you have like Maersk, like, what does Maersk do? Like, they they ship, they actually ship containers, right? But now they're using, you know, Kubernetes <laughs> to manage containers. They're in the container ship containers, <laughs> exactly. They're in the container so, business. So, you know, I'm seeing traditional insurance yeah. companies. Like, so yeah. I think what we're doing is we're basically hitting, we're kind of past that threshold of like yeah. early adopters and tinkers, and now we're moving to like full blown mainstream adoption. And part of that is yeah. the cloud providers are all offering yeah. managed Kubernetes, so it's convenient for companies yeah. that are moving to cloud. And then on the distro front, you know, OpenShift, PKS, Rancher, they're, they're all mature products. So there's just a lot of yeah. stability, maturity in, in, in the ecosystem. Stu and I were just, talking. Just, just one, you're talking yeah. about the mature stuff. Yeah. Give, give us your take on Knative. What should be people be looking at that? How does serverless so fit into all serverless, of this? Serverless, you know, we love serverless and CNCF. We just view it as another kind of programming model that eventually runs on some type of containerized stack, right? So for us in CNCF, we have a serverless working group that's been putting out like white papers. We have a spec around cloud events standardized that. I think Knative is a fantastic approach of how to basically build a kind of like CNCF where it's like a set of components that you could use to build your own kind of serverless framework. And I think the adoption's been great. We've actually been talking to them about potentially bringing in some components of uh, Knative into CNCF. Uh, I think it's, I think like, if you want to provide your own serverless offering, you're going to need the components in Knative to make that happen. And you know, I've seen like SAP's picked up on it. GitLab just announced a serverless offering yeah. based on Knative today. So I think it's a great technology. It's still very early yeah. days. I think yeah. uh, you know serverless is great and will be you know continually used. But it's it's one option of many. Like we're going to have. 
we're going to have containers, we're going to have serverless, we're going to have mainframes. It's going to be a mix of everything. Like, like yeah, I mean, you know, we, you know we, I'm old enough to remember the old client server days when multi-vendor was a big buzzword. Multi-cloud now is a subtext to hear. Yeah. I think that one of the big stories in addition to the maturity is that you start to see people, hey, I want choice. Yeah. And so, hybrid cloud is the word today, but I think ultimately people view it as a multi-cloud environment of resource. So one interesting thing about KubeCon, I think one of our uh, reasons that we've grown so much is, if you look at it, there's really no other event you could go to that is truly multi-cloud. You have all the hyperscale folks, you got your end users and vendors in one area, right? Versus you, know, you going to a vendor specific event. And so I think that's kind of been part of our yeah. you know, benefit and, and then luck to kind of stumble on this where everyone is kind of in the same room. So I think next well, year, big push on, on bringing all, every, you know, all the clouds. Well Chris, thanks for spending the time. Yeah. I know you're super busy. CTO and COO of the CNCF really making things happen. This is a real important technology wave, the cloud computing and having the kind of choices and ecosystem around open source is making it happen. Congratulations yep. to your success. Thanks. We're going to continue coverage here. Day one of three days of CUBE <laughs> coverage. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Stay with us for more after cool. this short break. Cool.